Hello, friends. Um, <laughs> I've decided that you're my friends. And this is something that in, in acting, because my background is in the performing arts, when you have a monologue and you're communicating into blank space, it's important that you choose to really know who you're talking to, right? Regardless of who's watching. And I think that that's something that I have been hesitant to want to do in the online space and also understanding that could be helpful in the online space. And even now I'm having like, oh, I have a bruise. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> I've been clumsy lately. I um, I don't know that I've been clumsy lately, but I've been having a lot of injuries lately. Uh, my, I was doing some kundalini, kundalini yoga the other day, and then like an hour later, I couldn't I couldn't move anymore. And my life, my body is asking me to like really slow down. I like have a cane right now because it's an old injury. I have um, herniated discs in my back that frustrate me. Um, and then I noticed I have this, this bruise. So I don't know where that came from, maybe from hobbling around my apartment, bumping into things since I injured my back. Um, but I've been really connecting to why I'm showing up online in space, what it is I want to do. And I feel like I had a really clear idea when I first started. And then that started to, I started to go off in these other directions. And then I started to lose sight of what it is I wanted. And I think the thing is I keep coming back to for pages and process specifically because I have my other project self-care for performers obviously I have the way I share from myself as myself which I want more and more to bring myself as myself to all of my projects that's sort of the the ultimate goal and um those of you who are watching um you know, I talk a lot about the human condition, but I also talk a lot about creativity and I also talk a lot about the making and sharing process. So the odds are that um, even though I was like, I'm gonna talk to you like you're my friend, like I know who you are, like I, like I have an idea of exactly who you are. I also though, I really want a live relationality. Like I really want to also get to know some of the people who are watching watching engaging with the work that I do and and maybe this is a really naive thing and and the long like I think the last share I did on YouTube was like I need boundaries from you and and while that's totally true I also want to build healthy relationship with with the making sharing process and with my concept of like viewer or audience or, which sounds so distant like as a performing artist the concept like like after a show, you go and you engage with um, with your friends and the audience and or people who you don't know that just watched whatever it was you shared. But there's something really interesting, I think, about the online forum is that you don't have the like after a show, a live show kind of experience where you have some sort of ex like relationship, like post share with audience and that feels a little like <gasps> to me um and you know and of course like around the making sharing process too there's always going to be trolls there's always going to be really shitty people that are going to come and decide to ruin your day and decide to poop all over your content or your heart or your soul right and <laughs> Those of us who do choose to make and share from a place of authenticity and vulnerability and caring about whatever it is that we're sharing, however that is. And I think one of my defense mechanisms that I've used, at, the, at least at the onset of pages and process was like, I'm just doing whatever. I'm not trying to make a thing. I'm just doing whatever. I'm not trying to make a thing. But, and that has been true. And at the same time, I feel like what I want to move towards is to like, make a thing. So there's a degree of like needing to rip off a bandaid and not try to accomplish anything to just like be in action and take, take chances with my creative making sharing process and also like learn how to edit and learn how to, oh, the sun is bright. Hang on. Yeah, and I just, and I think I needed a place too to be like, I just am tired, I'm tired, I'm tired of figuring things out. 
I'm tired of things not working out. I'm tired of like investing like crazy into my career as a performing artist. And, and yeah, absolutely. I have incredible memories and I have some wonderful experiences and, you know, some cool photos and things like that. And some of my resume, I look back on, I'm like, wow, that sounds better than I think that it would considering where I'm at now. And the where I'm at now is like pandemic unemployed, starting a coaching business, which feels really great. But that's also like, I realized how much like I needed to charge what I felt like my value is. And anytime I was charging underneath what I really truly felt my value was because it's market rate and what I pay for the same services, <laughs> I was, I was, I was really starting to get resentful. And at the same time, I understand that like my community, my demographic of artists that I work with, not, and this isn't everybody, and I'm hoping to, for the one-on-one, -on -one, the more like invested person-to-person -person experiences that I have. And of course I have my community and I connect with them and, and have like supportive coffee chats with my friends and my former students and things like that. But, but as far as like the, the concept of commerce, right? The concept of like, I am someone who's valuable and worthy of being paid a market rate for the things I have to offer when performing artists are so, are so like the narrative that we have is that you're gonna be underpaid, you're gonna be overworked and shut up and like it, right? And and I have that, that conditioning and to like, like it's like busting through walls of like I don't want that anymore I don't want that anymore I don't I don't want that anymore and I think that in in part I've been like I don't I don't want to perform anymore but I love the I really do I I, I really enjoy creativity and when there's a supportive environment and when it's a project I feel good about being a part of it's it's absolutely wonderful but what I don't want anymore is to feel taken advantage of taken for granted and to not feel like the investment I'm putting into something is actually reaping rewards and that's where things have been hard with pages and process as well as my other projects self-care for performers and whatnot is I feel like there's like this this incredible amount of investment that that I see people who are um you know we can use the term content creators um but who who use the 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 value of, um, I'm sorry, if you are a content creator and you like that word, I'm sorry, I don't mean to speak to it in a way that's like diminishing what you do. I think I've been learning how to, um, how to find value in some of the words I think I've judged before and some of the ways people show up that I, I think that I had a, a lot of stigmas around and, figuring out how it could maybe work for me because I have these chronic injuries from being a professional dancer with systemic hypermobility and meaning it's like the bad kind of being hypermobile. It's great to be flexible, but also your bones, my bones don't stay in place because of how like lax my ligaments are. And so that creates like a I mean, I haven't been diagnosed for a potential disability, but there's 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 a potentiality that there's there are some things that I might, if I really pursued getting a diagnosis, I might be able to get one. And I think that, that that's, that's challenging one because it's like, well, should I just, should not just, but should I pursue that so that I can just take things a little bit easier on myself? and have the support that is designed to be there for people who really truly can't show up to work the way that other bodies can. And also how frustrating it is. Like I just, I, I like I'm so creative, I'm trained in creativity. I train people in creativity. I was teaching at the college level. Like I understand how to pivot and how to work with inspiration. And what I'm finding though for me is that it's not that I lack the skills, it's that I, I really have a deep terror of you <laughs> and not necessarily you individually, right? But like the concept, and maybe you relate to this if you're making a maker and a sharer, the concept of public, the concept of, of online space, it's terrifying. 
it's it's just this this sea of who knows what right and I think the thing about the ocean is, well, I love the ocean and my name means of the sea drawn from the water, right? I am very much a watery uh, persona kind of person. I also, though, I know like, like I have this desire, this need to, to connect to like the fire of me to almost protect myself within the sea. And um, I'm also an Aries with a lot of Aries placements and like, like seven different fire <laughs> signs inside of my chart which is a lot so I have like this intense amount of fire and then like my name is all water and and I'm learning how to ignite that with the sort of ignite the fire with my air with my voice with my speaking which I've had a lot of constriction around my vocal cords and I've had to work through a lot of my own personal shadow work and um, fear of what it would mean to speak as myself for myself and all these like images and visions, which you could say are past life, or you could say it's like religious trauma from growing up in a predominantly Christian world and nation, but they're like really intense experiences and very vivid and very graphic and very uh, terrifying. And, and so to, choose to keep coming back is interesting choice right but I also I just feel this like call this need this desire and I've had um I work with with etheric layers of the dream space and so the waking dream space for me too you can call it visions or visioning and a lot of what I'm I've been told or been asked to keep doing is finding a way to keep coming into space and sharing this work specifically for performing artists, specifically about um, like learning how to do it online, learning how to not feel like, because I love being in a circle. I love, I love having containment. And, and while I perhaps will be teaching you containment, part of what I'm being asked to do is to not feel like I need a circle so much and, and exist a little bit more like this. And move throughout the world or move as, I don't know if a billboard is the right word, but like have things that people can come and go and pass through and kind of watch, which feels less relational to me, right? Which is what I'm always wanting is relationship and relationality. And, and, and I'm also aware that perhaps there's a degree of willingness to step into a different kind of relationship that I don't want. <laughs> because it feels lonely. And if you're a maker or sharer, or you're creating content, you're posting it online, like, or you're, you're a creative leader, like there is something so lonely about being in a leadership position. There's something so lonely about choosing to go your own way and carve your own path. It's just really can be so <sighs> sad. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear it. There's, a, there's an alarm outside right now. Mm. Filming at your dinner table in Los Angeles in the middle of the day. All sorts of sounds sometimes come and go through here. But anyways, I wanted to come on today and I wanted to invite us into a writing session about relationship, about the relationship to the outside world, about re relationship to the concept of like public image and how, how we might be able to bring ourselves with us like authentically into the relationality of it, but like less like, hey, this is, I'm inviting you into my home and more like, hey, I'm sharing from a very like boundary clear, like this is where I begin and end, but like here you are and like I can care about you from here. And also if I receive, of course not from you directly, but but from random people who want to ruin someone's day on the internet, if I receive something like that, um, oh my God, my head's like itching. Then, then it's not inside of my nuclear sense of self. It's like, it, it has something to bounce off of. It has a way for me to just be like, cancel, clear, delete, block that user, move on with my day and you know, and it, and I think when I started working in this space, 
you can call this codependency, you can call this being a healer and stepping into like the role that I usually fill. But oftentimes it is like holding space for what's there and potentially what's there is a lot of volatility, right? And I feel like when I don't want that anymore, I do enough of that already in my own body. Like I don't need that in the public space too. I just don't, I'm just tired. I'm just tired, I'm just tired. Are you tired too? I'm tired, I'm so tired. I'm so tired. And I'm gonna let that be okay. Okay, so we're gonna journal. I'm gonna do three pages. I, um, I'm still playing around with like forum format of like how I do this. And it, so I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you what I'm thinking and then we'll see how things actually show up. So I did like it. I do on, on Instagram, these like overhead views of me writing in like a, like a fast paced. And then I do some voiceover over it from some of the pages that I wrote. And I've been really liking that. It feels very creative, artistic. It seems like the the viewers, my viewers, the people, the people on the internet, you, I don't know, uh, like it. So that's, that's good too. Um, so there's, I feel satisfied from the process and it seems like it's matching and meeting um, people's desires to connect with what I'm creating. And so I think at the end of the day, that's like the gold nugget, right? That we as making and share makers and sharers are trying to look for, like where, where does it feel good to show up and where do people seem to like what we're, dishing out and when there's when either we're like this feels great and nobody's responding we can continue to do that and it feels great and that's totally fine and it can be for ourselves and I do a lot of that um but I think where we get into trouble right is that codependency thing but at the same time we live in a capitalist society which is like we if we are wanting to make money from the work we're creating it does need to resonate with people who want to engage with it in a way that's going to lead if not directly already if it's not directly already a part of our our making money right oh, I still feel I have so much work there to do like it's like I have this like vow of poverty or some something which I want to break and and I am and I'm doing that and it feels good and it feels good to hold my coaching container prices as they are like at the actual value that is is the market rate of the people that I that I either do work with or would want to work with and knowing that like I the same work when I come in and out of their spaces it's like I do the same kind of work and in some ways I'm like no I actually maybe even have more wealth of um, a toolkit because of the varied ways in which I've, I've studied and trained and also a little bit of that, I think ADD kind of like hyper fixation mode where I like go, I really go into like, get really interested in a topic and I go there. And I've done that a lot with a lot of different things, spirituality and psychology and um, sort of trauma responsiveness and also like the creative dream space and um, and then of course the decades of performing arts training and and the teaching that goes into that the healing arts that I do like it's just this whole big amalgamation of like wow that's that's a lot and it's really good and I need to not undersell myself but I keep wanting to undersell myself <laughs> you relate to that I I I relate to me. I hope so, right? Because if I'm not relating to myself, we might have a problem. Um, okay, <laughs> so that said, we're gonna write. And I don't know how I'm gonna do this yet. If I'm gonna hit pause and brain stopped. I'm just going to do it. We're just going to write. I'm going to figure out the rest in the editing process. Okay. I'm also going to turn on my air conditioner while I do this because you don't need to hear anything moving forward. Okay, here we go. That's right. I'm going to do three pages. If you want more time than is happens to be available, pause. And you probably will because I think I'm probably either going to speed this up or I'm going to read my pages somewhere, maybe at the beginning, maybe at the end. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. If I go directly into reading my pages, then pause first, write first. 
and then we'll carry on. This is hard. I'm trying to figure out order. And as like a, as a teacher, right? Order matters. If I do it for me, it's one order. If I do it for you, it's another order. And I'm trying to navigate the space between how much is this for you and how much is this for me? I don't know that therein lies the rub. I'd love it to be for both of us. This is my goal, but this is something I don't see. I just don't see it, and but I want it. And so I feel like if I want it, I know it's out there. I see other creators saying things that I can tell that that's what they're wanting to. So I'm going to try shit until we figure it out. But this is like a, I don't know how this is working and I don't know if this is working and your feedback is always helpful as long as it's like um, from a place of, I liked it when, and I want more of, right? So that that's like positive reinforcement. I liked it when this happened and I would need more or I would like more or it would feel really good to experience more of this other thing, right? And then that's an invitation for me that depending on, you know, how I keep showing up, I can fold in really beautiful feedback in a way that I might be able to receive a little bit better than if it's just like, I didn't like it when you did that. And I felt really disoriented when, and like, you can, you can say all that stuff too, if you need to, or want to, and also don't (laughs) (laughs) write it in your journal, maybe, and then find a way to communicate it to me in a way that's a little bit more positive and a little bit more affirming of this very messy experience. I mean, acutely aware that I'm having, right? We don't need to be like, you're having a messy experience. I know I'm having a messy experience. (laughs) And part of the the creative process, which is why like pages in process is pages in process, because I don't want it to just be like pages and completed, everything looks beautiful, even though like I do want that. And maybe one day it'll become that because we'll have worked through this together. <laughs> but for now, it's really about like process. Like what the fuck is the process? I don't know. I'm figuring it out as I go. And you're along for the ride. <laughs> so, okay, here we go. Let's write. <laughs> okay, I just had an idea and I'm very excited about it. So I'm going to insert a clip of like, hey, pause, do your own stuff for your three pages. And then, and then we'll cut back to like me. I'm going to like move us through like a decompression, like breathing exercise. And then at the end, I'm going to share an overhang of me reading the pages. Maybe I'll do it at the beginning. It feels like I want to do it at the beginning. I'm going to try that. Shall we try that? Let's try that. July 22nd, 2022. It's the 22nd of July on the 22nd year of this century. (laughs) I am feeling so tired and raw and curious about it all. My relationship to the making and sharing process. I desire to have more connection to failing forward, the distant things. You say your name comes as a preparatory thing and the stuffing exists outside the bear. What are you doing? Do you know who you are or how you want to make? Both yes and no. What are you aligning to? Do you even know? Creative practice, movements and measures, current seas of change, the fragmentary desire of how you create. It's okay to not know Trust the process, clarify your boundaries and intentions, and then play. You come formed anew and walk into new territory with greater ease of comfort. Please be kind to yourself. You beacon home your experience, the transient times, 
the dark, cool pool of desire in its purest form. You watch yourself as you dive off cliffs and become a tender kind of offering. What say you? Don't you know how to be or act? Yes. Yes, you do. What comes through? How do you connect to the practices of your life? Perhaps it's less about the other people. They will tell you how it applies to them as well, or not. It's okay to live how you want, how you feel called. <sighs> She's back. She's back, she went on a ride. Maybe this is just it. Maybe I'm not holding as much space for you. <laughs> what did I just say? I just said I'm not holding space anymore. I need to do it this way. So maybe it's that. Maybe it's that, right? <sighs> maybe it's coming into connection as the maker sharer that I'm actually not holding space for you. I'm going through a process and just sharing it, which is what pages and process is theoretically supposed to be. It's a place that I made for myself so that I could just go through my process and share it. But I, I think it's because I've had years of being a teacher and a healer that I really, it's really hard to shake the experience that I'm supposed to hold the space for you. But maybe what I have the possibility of doing is showing you like, hey, this is me holding the space for myself and then sharing it with you and inviting you to do the same, which I recently shared I recently changed, shifted my Instagram bio to, to from like stream of consciousness writing for, you know, insight and healing or whatever it was that I had, I would periodically change it, but, um, but changed it from like what it is we're doing and more, it's just like, this is pieces of my pages and process and, and just sharing pieces of it. And I'm inviting you to do the same. So maybe this is just me sharing pieces of my pages and process and then inviting you to do the same in the comments in your own shape, making sharing process. And if you'd like to tag me, this is like what it was initially when I said, this is what I'm doing, but it keeps be trying to become something else. I think because of my patterns, I think it's me like having a really clear idea and vision of what I want this space to be. And then having a really hard time upholding the patterns that, would, that actually would make it feel like that or be just that because I don't have those patterns pre-existing. And I think this is a really... Oh, what a metaphor for everything, any kind of change that we're ever going to do, right? We need to, of course, change the, the belief systems and the, or the intentionality of how we're coming into stuff, but then we have to really deconstruct and reconstruct our behaviors and our actions as well. And like, you know, there's a lot of really wonderful, beautiful um, advice that I receive, which is to like, well, you know, connect back to yourself, go with the flow, feel into what feels good, and then like allow that to come forward. And, and that's a wonderful way to be. And if that's where you're at, where that practice is feeling so luscious for you, please, please, please do it and drink it in. And, and I continue to periodically pick that tool up as well. And I think it's a wonderful tool. And I'm finding more and more, like I really need and want to face like my inner conflict around consistency, around showing up to the thing. And, and like, as a metaphor, I wrote this in a post recently on my personal Instagram page about like the journaling process. But like when I first started journaling, it did not feel good. It felt terrible. And I would keep showing up. And it was this commitment I made through the artist's way by Julia Cameron, which is this beautiful recovery book for, for like creative practice. And it's all about just keep showing up into the thing, just keep showing up and letting it be what it is. You know, it was stream of consciousness onto the page right for three pages a day. And I, I think that I want to bring some of that willingness to be with the hard thing to this space, to the making and sharing process that is going to be hard sometimes. And I'm going to maybe say terrible things like I did in the journal, because that's my stream of consciousness. And maybe sometimes like my videos are going to be my content or whatever I'm making or whoever I am when I'm showing up here is not going to always be what I wish it was, but 
if I don't keep showing up to the process, to the practice of the making and the sharing, I won't be able to find the tools I need inside of myself to really make the lasting change um, that I desire because, you know, change that really from a core level, it, when it really comes from that place, it often doesn't happen in a flash. Sometimes it does, but very, very rarely. Usually it's a, it's a slow, gradual, <laughs> tectonic kind of shift. And even when it does happen in an instant, oftentimes our old patterns will set back in and then we have to like maybe break through again, right? But, and, but, and. <laughs> and I feel like I've had so many of those breakthroughs and setbacks and breakthroughs and setbacks and that sort of cyclical experience, which again is part of the creative process. And I get that. And it's not that I want to eliminate that completely. And I also want to incorporate some different kinds of tools that can help me feel a little bit more stable when the inevitable fall <laughs> crash does happen in, you know, feeling so good, you're expanding and you're sharing, and then something happens either mentally or, or, or in your exterior landscape. Maybe you get a, like a shitty comment, or maybe you have like a terrible thought about yourself a judgment, right? And then you start to spiral or you feel unsafe and then you shut down and then you allow it to really impact the, the degree which to which you're able to engage. And I really wanna make those slower micro movements so that I feel like I'm really building lasting mobility, motility in science <laughs> that sort of usually move, use for the body and the, the, the way the bones can move with each other. But I want that kind of experience, a motility of moving through my creative practice in the ways that are supportive. And right now what a metaphor, like my lower back is a chronic injury. I have herniated discs in my, in my um, lower spine. For those of you who know, L4, L5, lumbar four, lumbar five, and L5, S1. So lumbar five, six, sacral. Um, so that's the triangular bone at the base. Um, one. Uh, L4, L5, L5, S1. That's where I am. And that's all in the like lower chakra region all around money, stability, sexuality, creative energy, right? All of these baser rooted experiences is, and I've had so much impact and lack of stability in those places in my life um, in certain ways and in others, you know, I think we all have complex experiences that we can, depending on what we're tuning into and how we're sourcing through our memory system, you know, different memories or different ways of being will impact us differently. My point is, my point is I don't have a point, I think. And like, that's okay. It can be about process. Pages and process is about daily pages and process and figuring out along the way and not feeling like you have to arrive somewhere except choosing to show up to the page or to the practice. Thank you for being a part of my practice, helicopter. Los Angeles, you're so loud. It's a strange thing to be a hypersensitive person in the middle of a big city. And also really enjoying being in the middle of a big city as much as it's also very stimulating. Um, I don't know how to leave you. <laughs> I guess I must like you, okay. All right, thank you for being here. Um, I'm gonna keep recommitting to this practice of showing up. And I know a lot of in the artist's way, you know, you're supposed to journal every day, but come back after a week and be like, did I journal every day? And it's not about having had journaled every day, even though, yes, of course, that's wonderful when we can. It's also about looking, where have you not? Why did you not? What's going on there? Is it, where's the resistance coming from? And I feel like I'm identifying now that I've, I'm trying to come back into, into the YouTube land after taking like a four month hiatus to really renegotiate why I'm here, I think 
a lot of my why I couldn't show up came through in this video. Um, so thank you for you for being a part of my creative healing and practice. And I hope it inspires you in some form or fashion as well. And if you feel inspired to share some of your pages, your process, your practice, I, um, I would love to feel not so alone. <laughs> <laughs> but also part of it is that we become willing to sit in the aloneness of ourselves and to find a lot of clarity and the experience of there is only one experience just like mine it's like there's only one experience just like yours so wherever you are I'm wishing you well in your singular solitary experience and thank you for joining me for part of my very singular solitary experience Till next time bye-bye Thank you.